right now. Listen up. Showtime. That's great. This is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. Six minutes after four o'clock on the first day of July. A 4th of July weekend. Wow. I love it. Parades, fireworks, cook it out. Hot sun baking my white Irish skin. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome to our 4th of July show. Uh, remember what the 4th of July is about, man. Remember those guys, those women, those children, those men that got on those boats. Can you imagine crossing the Atlantic on a boat 240 years ago? Hmm. I don't remember what the percentage was, but a high percentage of them never made it. Didn't make it, yeah. They died on the boat. And then they came over to this land because they wanted one thing, religious freedom. Because at that time, the state, Britain, demanded that the church be the state's church. And that was the Episcopal church. And there were people that wanted to to praise God and worship God in their own way. Growing up an Episcopalian, I can understand that. That's what this weekend is about. It started all with them. Didn't start with George Washington. Okay. It started with those folks coming over that wanted religious freedom and ended with a war against the mighty Britain that somehow God let us win. That's incredible when you think about that. And 240 years later, this is the United States of America. And obviously fleeing oppressive taxation policy of England. Boy, we didn't get that one very well, did we? (laughs) Governments like taxing their people. I, I, you know, they're greedy, just like people are greedy. All right, we have a very special guest today. One in the studio and one on the phone in the studio is uh, Greg Baker. And uh, Greg's just a great guy, loves Jesus, very, speaks very well uh, for a living. He works for the family leader, but uh, you're a disciple maker. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's your job, right? It is my job. Yeah, me too. I like my job. The Lord comes. And uh, uh, we have a big event coming up with the family leader a week from tomorrow on the 9th. And one of the gentlemen that we're going to have here live, uh, God willing, is Pastor Steve Corey. And Pastor Stephen Corey is planting churches in Israel. In fact, his latest one has been in Bethlehem. Now, I got to tell you, if I'm the CEO of the biggest uh, 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 thing in the world, which God is the CEO of the biggest thing in the world. We all work for him. It's a worldwide organization. It's in every corner of the earth. It's got more doors, more hotels. It's got more churches. It's got more people. Forget Apple, forget Google, forget Ford. Working for the kingdom of God is a full-time 24-7, 365 job that I wish I could have more time to do. This guy goes over to Bethlehem, right? Remember, that's where Jesus was born and plants a church. I just think that's amazing. Pastor Corey, welcome to Max World on a Friday afternoon. Max, thank you, my friend. I'm honored to bring greetings to you and to Greg, to all the listeners right from the heart of the city of Jerusalem, Israel, the city of the king. I've always wanted to visit that, and in the past few years, I've been scared because of everything that's going on. What, what, what? Should I be scared, or should I just throw caution to the wind and come and walk where Jesus walked? Yeah, uh, you come and walk where Jesus walked. You know, statistically, it is uh, one of the safest places on earth, even when the light of some of the craziness. But uh, when you put that in, plug it into numbers, it's actually one of the top three safest cities in the world. Um, it, it reconnects with the roots of the Christian values. It, it, this is the cradle of Christianity. This is where Christianity started. Um, and I encourage you and every believer on there to come visit, to walk where Jesus walked, to reconnect with our Christian roots. 
I would like to tell people that uh, if you're listening on 99.3 the radio or on the radio, uh, that's awesome. Thank you. We're also live webcasting right now around the world at webcast1live.com. And put that slide back up there again, Jebediah. You can see Stephen and what he looks like, and he'll talk about his mission and the history and the whole nine yards. So, and if you if you're not able to get in front of a uh, a webcast now. Then when you get home tonight or sometime over the weekend, uh, go to my website and click on today's show. It's all YouTube. It's all free. There's no membership. There's no registration. Just go there. Go to the show and uh, uh, you can see what Steve looks like. You're a young fella. I sure am. I, uh, I, uh, I'm 36, but I've, uh, when you add in all that, all that we've been through, it's, uh, people tell me I'm, uh, I'm, I'm about 65. <laughs> yeah, I expected you to be an old man with a long gray beard. You know, I mean, that's who lives in Israel, right? So what's it yeah, like exactly. being an American living in Israel? Well, I was born in Jerusalem. Oh. And I grew up in the city in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fully born um, Israeli, Arab, some call me Palestinian, uh, but I am um, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of the Messiah. Um, we are a unique ministry, Mac, because um, our church has been firebombed many times in the, in the 80s and 90s for preaching the gospel, for sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, some of our members have been beaten, attacked. Mm. We had two girls get shot to death. Um, and much more, simply for taking a stand for living out the Bible. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. You sound like you've got a New Jersey accent. Has anybody ever told you, know, that's you that? What a, that's what an American wife would do to you, and uh, and going five years for college in America. That's what it'll do. That's what it'll do to you. All right. You know, I am. Um, I'm a fully born, uh, full bred here in the land of Israel, and. Uh, grew up in the city of Bethlehem, born in Jerusalem, uh, came to America to go to college and came back here to continue living out my calling today. And that's our ministry. It's called Holy Land Mission. That's our ministry. Pastor Stephen, you, you said you were born in Jerusalem. Did you grow up in a Christian home? I grew up in a second generation Christian home. My father came out of Greek Orthodoxy, a very hardcore, traditional a church, uh, uh, you know, traditional church movement, which is uh, which is more more uh, following in traditions uh, than anything else, and and he just came to understand that uh, that there's a connection between him, uh, or there should be a deeper connection between him and the Savior and his Creator, and and that's when he met an evangelist. The evangelist was sent by a small country church from uh, from the Missouri area, and. Uh, his evangelist was shared the gospel with my father, and my father accepted Christ and that evening and attended a small revival in Jerusalem, dedicated his life um, to Christ a few years down the road. Uh, another opportunity came up for him to go to America, study Bible college. Uh, you're, uh, the, the nation of America, the Christians in America, we are in debt to Christ. It. We are dead to Christ through you, because it was, it was you guys who brought the gospel to us in Jerusalem. It was you guys who opened up doors for my father and myself to go to college, and we feel that we are in debt to Christ through you, the American people. And that's why, to Mac and Greg and everybody's listening, that's why I love to travel to America and get to speak in, in Washington, D.C., and get to speak in Congress and other areas to, to give back to you guys, which is to challenge the church, to challenge every American, regardless of what level of faith or denomination they're in, to, to encourage you guys to connect, to get back to your first love, uh, because what you have is very special, uh, and you have a gift from God, and that's freedom. And I encourage every believer to continue hanging strong on to that. Pastor Stephen, wow, that is incredible. Thank you. That, what a what an encouragement. And, and I want to remind everybody, uh, we didn't do this yet this hour. We, we are so excited about you coming, speaking to us actually a week from Saturday at the Family Leadership Summit uh, that the Family Leader has partnered with 99.3, and we want to give away tickets uh, this whole hour. So if you want to uh, hear Pastor Stephen speak along with Ann Graham Lotz and Del Tackett and many others, uh, give us a call right now and we can get you tickets for your whole family to go to the Family Leadership Summit. 
Summit, Saturday, July 9th. That's a week from this weekend. Call 515-244-0077. That's the number to call to get those tickets, 515-244-0077. All right, Pastor Stephen Corey is live with us uh, from Jerusalem. He will be here a week from tomorrow to speak at the Family Leader Summit. And if you want tickets, like he just said, Chris just said, just call up and we'll get them for you. No cost. Uh, just you want to go you want to bring the kids mother hubbard and all the little ones it doesn't matter this is uh, an age appropriate show and everybody's welcome just call jebediah and we'll get you the tickets you need hey pastor your message in in jerusalem is it gaining more traction amongst the jewish people amongst the palestinian people or who is opposing your message the the jews or the palestine people Sure, sure, brother. Um, well, you know, our church is known to be, our ministry, Holy Land Missions is our ministry, and we're known to be a ministry that preaches the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, not only that, we are also known to be a ministry that shares the gospel in areas like, in hostile areas like Gaza and Jenin, and other areas, unashamedly risking our lives and the lives of those that serve under our, under our umbrella to share the gospel. Um, on top of that, we are an Arab ministry, that also stands with Israel. We love Israel uh, on, on a biblical basis, uh, where Jesus says to love the neighbor as thyself. So you lump all these messages together, brother. We technically are stuck in the middle of, you know, between a rock and a hard place. We are in the middle. Sure. Uh, on the Jewish, from the Jewish realm, we are, we are uh, uh, you know, we've corrupted the Jewish message by, by saying Messiah has already come. Uh, and on the Muslim side, we've corrupted their message that uh, uh, we call Jesus Christ, uh, which is to them a prophet to us, the, the, the Trinity, the, the third person Trinity of God, or second person Trinity. We call them God, God, man on earth. So we are stuck between rock and a hard place, and it depends on where we minister. It depends what we do and where we do. For example, when I was around 16 years of age, a young man came to us from the Muslim background wanting to know about Jesus Christ. Um, I spent two weeks, two and a half weeks with him talking about Jesus. Long story short is... Yeah, Pastor Corey, in fact, you're going to have to make that long story a little shorter. Uh, I want to hear the rest of it. When we come back, we're up against a hard break. Pastor Corey, live from Jerusalem, right here, live on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30 right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for their opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 21 minutes after the hour of 4 o'clock. On the first day of July in the Lord's Year 2016, a 4th of July weekend, very rarely does 4th of July land on Monday. I guess it does every seven years or whatever it is, or six years. Uh, but I think this is the coolest way to have 4th of July. It starts out on a Friday, beautiful weather. I don't know what the weather forecast said. I don't think we're looking for any bad weather this weekend. Bob says no. no. And we're going to have parades and we're going to have fireworks. And please, please, please don't get lost on what this is. You know, remember the reason for the season. All these people came over here in 1492. Half of them died in the boats. They stuck around. They built a colony. Then they built a state. And then they built a country. And in 1774, 5, and 6, the Britain, Brits, who were our sponsors, they were, were, I mean, this is really a British territory. It started out that way. And the Brits came back and said, we're going to tax you and we're going to give you uh, religious uh, um, uh, oppression. And they fought them. And they beat them with God's help. And that's why we have the 4th of July. All right. Greg Baker from the Family Leader is here. And also on the phone, I have Pastor Stephen Corey. He is live in Jerusalem right now. And I'm guessing it's about 20 minutes after midnight over there. Yes, sir. The time ticked. <laughs> well, thank you very much for staying up this late to talk to us. I, to be honest with you, I didn't. I thought you were in America. I certainly would have taped this interview in advance and played it back so you didn't have to stay up till midnight. But now that you're here, thank you very much for your generosity of time. Uh, it's, it's my honor, my friend. It's, uh, it's the least I can do for uh, for those that are listening, and especially for the for the family leader and you, and just. Just, I, I love, I love America. I love your nation. I love what you guys do for the world, and um, and I, I encourage every Christian, every person in America, to to get back to their first love because that's what made you who you are today. Now, how long are you going to be in Des Moines or Iowa? I mean, you're going to speak on be, Saturday the t- the the the, the ninth. ninth. Yep. Yes, sir. I'll be speaking uh, on the ninth. Uh, and then uh, on Sunday, I'll be speaking with Faith, Faith Christian Outreach uh, Church in, in Mount Pleasant. Um, and then I'll be in America for about a three and a half months on a speaking tour, um, challenging churches and conferences. Um, I still have openings as well for, for those who are listening that are pastors or leaders uh, that, can, uh, that can go to their pastors and uh, would love to visit your church to encourage your, your, your folks uh, to, to be bold for the gospel, to be bold for Christ, um, and so forth. Well, I'm just wondering if you're going to be around in Iowa long enough that we could have you in the studio on, on Monday or Tuesday or, or even the Friday before. But you know what? I'll work I'll that out. I'll be there Monday. I'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, um, and Monday. And then you're leaving? The state of Iowa. All right, I well, go back to Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll talk to Sherry. I think that's your assistant that's been doing the, the correspondence yep. with me. Yep. All right. So um, what if I came to Israel right now, if I just flew into Tel Aviv and I got a cab and I went downtown Israel and I got a hotel room, where would Jesus be? Would I see him in cathedrals? Would I see him in coffee shops? Where would the sign, the fruit of Jesus be in Jerusalem in 2016? Well, unfortunately, you would find him in a remnant, which are a few on the Jewish side and in the heart of a few on the Arab side, both. Muslim who accepted Christ, or people who came out of traditional Christianity. 
Definitely Jerusalem is not what it used to be 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, or even, even 100 years ago. There is a spirit of religion. It's strong. There's a stronghold on it. Definitely the city of Jerusalem is an area that, um, that is exciting. There's never a dull moment, but there is, there is a sense of, um, there's a sense of uh, hopelessness in some aspects. Because there, there's constantly been turmoil and war and so forth. Even though you can walk down the street 8, 9, 10, 11, even 2 a.m. in the morning, you can walk in the street and, and the chances of something happening to you are, are very slim. Just because simply, simply the atmosphere of things. So it, it's safe. We would, it's very safe. Very safe. In fact, our ministry, Whole of Missions, we just finished our ninth uh, educational tour here in Israel. We bring people from America to walk the land, to go to be- visit people's homes. That's where Jesus is living. He's living underground church. He's living in the hearts of the persecuted, in, in small Bible studies, in homes, and of course in our church in Jerusalem, which which we are right now going to the biggest struggle, which is called Save the Jerusalem Church campaign, uh, of being kicked out of three different rental properties or pushed out of three different rental properties in the city of eastern part of Jerusalem, the Arab side of Jerusalem, for being a church that preaches the gospel. We've been pushed out of three rental properties in the city of Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. Hey, Pastor, is there any way for you to gauge the number of Christians in Israel? Well, if you if you add Gaza, Israel, the West Bank, the uh, population is around 11 million people. Uh, if you, when you lump all the Christians together, some numbers circulate between 250 to 350,000. Um, some include the Russian, Russian, you know, Russian Orthodox. Some don't include them in those numbers. But that's the average between 250 to 350,000 um, amongst this number. So it's close to 12. 12, uh, close to about 1.8 percent is the, the born again believers is 0.12 percent. All right, now 1.8 percent of the entire. I, I just want to get this straight. I'm asking you if this is what you said. 1.8 percent of the population of Jerusalem are Christians. Of the country. Of the country it of numbers, uh, Israel, West Bank, and Gaza. The whole. This whole. This whole area called Israel, West Bank, and Gaza, um, numbers fluctuate between 1.4 to about 1.7% um, percent of all denominations uh, put together in one bracket. All denominations of Jesus' followers? Yes. What are the other 98.2%? Well, numbers, numbers are given around... 80, 88% are Jews, 89% are Jews, um, the other are other. Basically, they're foreigners, they're, um, their religion in their bracket would be uh, general, there's no specific. Amongst the, amongst the 85 to 88% who are, who are Jews, um, only 12%, the most recent numbers, were given around 12% are religious, between 10 to 12% are religious. The other, the other 88, 89% of the Jews are secular Jews, meaning Jews that could be observant all the way down to being atheistic Jews. So Jewish there is, is more of a nationality than it is a religion. Yes, yeah, for the majority, for the majority, one, they are the majority in the whole country. Uh, number two, it is an identity, it's a nationalistic thing more than anything else. And don't forget in history, this is the first time that a Jewish nation is the majority overruling a minority. This is the first time in history mm. in thousands of years, as we know about, where the Jewish people are the majority overruling uh, or, or overseeing a, a minority in the history. All right, Pastor Stephen Corey is my guest today. He is live in Jerusalem. It's about uh, 1229 there, midnight. And he will be here next Saturday speaking at the Family Leader Leadership Summit. And I think he's going to be your favorite speaker. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything about anybody else. I'm just saying I think this is going to be your favorite speaker. Now, if for whatever reason funds don't allow you to go, uh, call me. Uh, call Jebediah, 244 
I don't care how many tickets you need. Your whole small group wants to go. That's fine. There's 10 tickets. Uh, you want to take a bunch of kids from the neighborhood because this is children friendly. Fine. Call Jebediah. Just call 244-0077 and uh, we'll get you the tickets you need. Um, you, you talked about roughly about 250000 Are your numbers increasing? Pastor? Uh, well, we are seeing converts come to Christ. Uh, you know, th- this culture, Middle Eastern culture, is a very close culture, meaning uh, you'll have somebody that's, that's been a believer in Christ for 10 years but never tells anyone. Um, and we see that randomly. Uh, we see that throughout the land simply because uh, because of the price they have to pay. I mean, we, we have people come to our church, whether it be they're coming from traditional Christian background or even coming from a Muslim background. They'll come to church three, four, five, six years, and they're watching us. Why are they watching? Because their mentality is they have so much to lose for their for professing Christianity, for professing to be followers of Jesus. And they watch us to see, are we living out what we are teaching? If we are, then they, are, they, they will go out on a limb. If we're not, their mentality is, why should I risk it all when you're, just, uh, when you're saying something and not living it? So there is a big price to pay. Um, and I'd always tell people, if, um, to have the honor to call yourself a Christian has to come at a price. Um, and I think that is the challenge that I'm bringing to America, uh, is being a part of changing this world, being a part of making this, better, this world a better place has to come at a price. And you have to be willing to pay that price to build the kingdom of God and to be a light in this earth. So are you conducting baptisms there? We are. We, uh, we have baptisms in the Jordan River. We sometimes do them in a closed circle of leaders in our church. Um, we're doing them in Jericho. We do, we've done them up north by the Galilee. And we have the privilege to baptize hundreds of, of believers that come on our, on our, uh, to come visit the land here in Israel with our ministry. We take them to the Jordan River. We do a Bible journey with them. We teach them the Bible. Um, it, it, on the ground to see it unfold before their eyes and seeing people. There, there, there is a revival, and I tell people always this. Is ISIS, with all the craziness that they've brought to this world, have actually created the biggest mission field for yeah. the Middle East because people are asking questions after questions about truth, about who the real father is and who the true God is. Our, pa- uh, our guest is Pastor Stephen Corey from um, Israel. He planted a church there. He was educated in the um, Americas, uh, but born and raised in Jerusalem and has now planted a church there. Greg Baker is here. Greg, do you have a question or comment for uh, Pastor Corey? Well, Pastor Corey, I, I think if there's time, Mac, I think it'd be good just to hear your family's background being rescued out of Islam. Cause, I mean, I know you have an Islamic background and the Lord's redeemed you through that. Well, uh, we have we have presence uh, of Islamic uh, traditions. I did not come out of uh, Islamic uh, background, but there is a strong Muslim presence in my school. I grew up learning Arabic. Of course, it's my first language. And in schools, the grammar books are stories from the Quran. Um, and what I would hear from, and what I what, what I would learn from school would always crash with what I would be what I would be taught at home from my mother um, as I as I mentioned earlier we my father became a believer through an evangelist that was sent by your nation the, the nation of America um, to send an evangelist to walk the streets of Jerusalem so growing up in that realm and under seeing both sides I saw on one end um, I saw a father of love and forgiveness and I saw on this other end I saw a, a, I saw a father or a God uh, that is about revenge and, and retaliation and, and about conquering and and there and, and I had to come to a point where I had to choose which one is the true God and which one am I going to follow and what has that has done to me even though I, I did come from a, a traditional Christian background believer what it did to me made me understand that if I say I'm going to follow the father of the father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I knew that I, that I, it's going to come at a price. And I was just stating earlier that this, uh, this young Muslim who, who wanted to know more about Jesus, I discipled him. All right, I Stephen. I let him to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold on. We're up against another break. We're coming back in three minutes, and then we'll have you for 10 minutes. We'll be gone for two, and then we'll come back for eight. So we got about 18 more minutes, and we'd love to hear your stories. Pastor Stephen Corey, live from Jerusalem, only here in Max World on 99.3 FM. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High B, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. 
I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate is free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make Make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. All right, 438, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then we'll join Hank, the Bible Answer Man, with a live radio program that's heard around the world. one ask hank Right now, we're halfway around the world. As we have Pastor Stephen Corey on the phone, it is 1238 a.m. past midnight, and he's up live for us in Israel, and he's got a church that he's planted over there, a Christian church, and um, I'm just fascinated to hear all about uh, Israel. Um, you were saying, uh, you were sharing a story about a uh, Muslim man that you were able to disciple, and I had to interrupt you because of a hard break. Pastor Corey, please continue. Thank you, Mac. Uh, it's good to continue sharing. Um, after two weeks or, or, or so, his uncles, uh, his mom found his Bible and gave it to his uncles, and uh, they actually put him under house arrest. They put him in his bedroom. They unwinded a metal hanger, and they began to beat him over and over and over again. You know, you know to tell him and ask him to deny Jesus, you're disgracing the family, you're disgracing the honor. Not one single time would he deny Christ as a Savior. He kept telling him, give me something to replace the peace, the joy that I found in Christ until then, until that moment comes. Don't ask me to give up. The only thing has given me hope. Um, his uncles got together and said he's been brainwashed. And for the meantime, uh, they decided that they wanted to go after the people that are doing the brainwashing, a.k.a. Uh, people who are evangelizing. I was walking down the church street in our church in Bethlehem while walking down the street. Um, someone comes up to me and says, are you Stephen? I said, yes. And I felt something burning in the back of my head. And I, I, I walked the back of my head thinking it's a bug or a fly. And I realized there's blood on my hand. Oh, and I no. turned around and I realized about five or six guys there with metal sticks and, and, and uh, with uh, metal, wooden sticks and metal chains. 
and began to beat me over and over and over again and call me names like infidel and traitor and, and, and evangelist. And uh, I shouted to the Lord, said, Lord, if you get me through this, I'll love you, I'll serve you more. And when I said that, I felt a white blanket just drop over my body. And at that moment, I understood what the psalmist was saying when he said, even if I lay my bed in the pit of hell, thou art there with me also. And that beating was intended to scare me. Uh, from talking about Jesus anymore, but all it did is drew me closer to love God. And these are stories that I'll be sharing also when I do speak um, at the conference as well uh, for those that do miss uh, today's interview. Uh, Pastor Stephen Corey, live from uh, Jerusalem. Um, 1.8% of the population there is Christian. Uh, The remainder of them is mainly Jewish, but a very small percentage are religious. How do the, 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 are there Jews that don't get along with some of the Christians? Are there, are there factions within those organizations that don't get along and there always seems to be some, some pressure? They are small, a small faction. Now remember the 1.8 or the 1.5 to 1.8, that's the whole country, including Gaza and the West Bank. If you only link it just to Israel, that 1.5, 1.8, brother, it goes down to about, to about 1.1% all within the state of Israel. And then, so, you know, you go out to the West Bank, it grows a little bit and so forth, but it it gets smaller and smaller. And some factions, uh, you know, the ultra-extreme Hasidic Jews and and the religious, the ultra-extreme ones, they do not appreciate um, Christians that, that share the gospel or share the message in their community. But for the most part, uh, the Jewish people understand uh, that yes, there is a division, there is a difference, and in, 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 in there, you know, we do get to a point when you pass the Old Testament where there is differences. Uh, but they, they do understand that Christians are their best allies. Uh, although there still is a lot of scars because many of the Holocaust survivors still link the the what happened in Auschwitz in Germany and, and both Poland and all those areas. They link that with uh, the killing of the six million plus Jews. They link it to Christianity because the church was silent during those days. So there still are a lot of scars that then a lot of it's an onion. You have to peel it to explain to them that just because somebody puts a cross on it doesn't necessarily mean they're a Christian. Um, not that anybody that, that calls my name shall be saved. So or calls himself a Christian, I mean, is necessarily a Christian themselves just because for saying it. And you have to peel that onion to explain that to them. All right, Pastor Stephen Corey is my guest. He's live from Jerusalem. He'll be here this, uh, I'm sorry, next Saturday, the, the 9th, or that the 10th, 9th, the for the uh, Family Leadership Summit, um, uh, Family Leader Leadership Summit. Uh, if you want tickets, they're free. Uh, well, they're only free if you get them from me for the next 17 minutes. Otherwise, they're 30 bucks. And you can get them, familyleader.com. But if you want some now, call Jebediah, and we'll get them to you. Frank? Uh, Pastor, you broke down the numbers of of, of the Jewish uh, f- fragmented segments over there in Israel. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to the numbers of what you think are what I would describe as the Orthodox uh, Jew who's basically looking forward to the temple restoration, the animal sacrifices cranking back up, and the Messiah is yet to come. What would that percentage be? Those, those that would call them the ultra-Orthodox and those numbers are, are between 10 to 12 um, percent. It depends what circle you ask, but it's very safe to say between 10 to 12 percent of the Jewish population are the uh, Orthodox religious community. They go beyond just being observant Jews. They live out the law, the 613 or 618, depending on what sect you're talking to. Is that the answer yeah. you were looking yeah, for? That's... Okay. Um, if I decided to come to Jerusalem, for um, something longer than a vacation. Let, let's say we go over there and we do our show live from Jerusalem. Wouldn't that be cool? And we do it for a month or whatever. Cool. If I sat down with Jewish people who were not Christians, how many of them would share that feeling that the church is partially responsible? The American church is partially responsible for the Holocaust because we remained silent. Would that be an older generation of people who might have even been there? Do, do the young millennials, uh, are they taught that by a, 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 a dysfunctional educational system? Where, where does that feeling come from that you said these people felt? 
overall, they would all, uh, at some point, uh, once you work through the barriers of language and translation, at some point, they will all, it will come out that the, that the church had some point in it. Um, they would link it down to Poland. They would link it down to, to the Lutheran Church in Germany. They would link it down to, um, to the, child, the Catholic Church, the Pope being silent, and so forth. So they don't, they don't separate the different denominations. They don't know they are denominations. They think the Pope represents every single Christian that walks this, this planet Earth. So the older generation would be more, uh, they would have more the bitter feelings towards the Christian movement. Um, And the younger generation might not have the strong bitterness, but they might have sort of, they might have the knowledge passed down from the grandparents and great grandparents that, uh, you know, know, many of the soldiers uh, who served in, in, in the military, served in the army, served under Hitler and gave allegiance to Hitler. Um, some of these were Catholics, or, or some would even call them Protestants, for those that belong to the, the Lutheran Church movement or what be it. So that is some of the things that you would see coming from them. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a relationship process, brother. It, it's, it, there's a lot of hurts there. It's, um, and even, even Muslims, they do it in Jerusalem. They, uh, when, we, when Christians point their fingers and claim Islam um, is all about violence and so forth, they are very good to point their fingers and, and blame the Crusaders for killing thousands and hundreds of thousands all the way from the Saudi Arabia, from the east, all the way down to, to, to Rome, to Italy, down to Jerusalem. So there's a lot of misunderstandings and things that has to be peeled, uh, which obviously takes time and takes relationship, but it's, it's the message of Jesus Christ, the message of love and forgiveness. It's, it's a message of truth that changes lives, that changes hearts. That is the answer, and that's what we're seeing happen sweep throughout the Middle East, where people are waking up to the truth that uh, the Jesus in the Quran is not the Jesus in the Bible. When they come to that realization, it's like a domino effect question after question and, and speculation mm. after speculation it begins to unfold before their eyes sounds like a uh, it sounds like an awesome place to go make disciples oh it, it really is and i i encourage people to visit our website holylandmissions.org to learn more about what god is doing you can learn more and more about um these mission trips or these educational trips we do. And Mac, we have 12 ministries in the land of Israel. Today, 39 years later, we have 12 active ministries, which includes churches on the ground. All right, I've got to stop you, Pastor. I've got to stop you. I'm sorry. Hard break. We'll be back in two minutes. Thanks for being with us live here on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for their opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. All right, uh, 10 before the top of the hour. Hank, the Bible Answer Man. We will not have a live show on Monday. I, it may be this show replaying. I'm not sure. Just remember what the 4th of July is all about. It, it, it's kind of like Christmas. You know, I, 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 I have such a hard time with Christmas because the, the whole concept of what Christmas is is, is gone. And, and maybe on Christmas Eve for a service or maybe on a Sunday mo- or on the Christmas Day morning, but it all gets lost in, in wrapping and bows and packages. And Well, the 4th of July is about our independence from Britain. We came over here in the late 1400s. We, that's when it started. And, and the only thing we wanted, we didn't want maize. We, we, we didn't want wild horses. We didn't want the Appalachian Mountains or the, the coast of the West, the Golden Coast of California. We wanted religious freedom. Because in Britain at the time, the state religion was the state's government. And as we have in America, the separation of, the separation of church and state. It's not the separation from church and state. It's of. And this is where the accuser has absolutely... I don't know. We need a revival. Man. Yeah, we need a revival because it's not, it's not heading in our way. Now, that sounds all so ominous and dark. I want to introduce you to a guy who lives in Jerusalem who preaches the gospel and 98% of the people reject it. How would you like to be fighting that battle? Now, that's what it's all about in Matthew 28. Pastor Stephen, Corey, you've got just a few minutes left, and I, I, I would love to have you longer, and maybe we can have you back sometime. And I, I do want to have you back sometime. But we'll record this thing at a better time during the day so you're not up at 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> what, what do you want? You're going to be at the Family Leader Summit next Saturday here in town. You're going to speak. Um, what do you want my listeners to remember about your mission and your ministry in Jerusalem? Don't give up on life. Don't give up on the promises that God has. Um, Media, um, don't let the news portray or don't let the media be the level, the parameter of the level of hope for the world. God is at work. God is healing people. God is still appearing in dreams and visions to people around the Middle East. God is just doing things beyond any of us can ever imagine. So do not allow, do not even give uh, give a benefit of a doubt for uh, for the for the evil in this world to to overcome uh, within your passion. To be bold, to to love the Lord. Um, his promises are real. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, and this is the message that I'm bringing to the family leaders to to challenge you to be bold, to be courageous for the gospel. Um, take back what's rightfully yours, and that's that America was built on Christian values. America was built on freedom, and there is still hope for America. It's uh, if you study history, um, America, with all the craziness happening in your nation, it's actually it's not that bad when you compare it to what other nations have done and other nations have been salvaged and resolved. So there's still hope for America. Um, and continue being bold and strong. Give back your first love. Pastor uh, Corey, uh, man, I really enjoyed talking to you today. I think you and I have a, a, a spirit that ties between us. I hope I get the opportunity to meet you. Uh, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to come visit you sometime. I, I'd like to come over there and, and walk in your shoes for a while. I've never you been... Would, uh, you're I've welcome. Never, I've never felt comfortable. In fact, I think I said it at the top of the show that I've never really felt comfortable about going there because I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. After talking to Pastor Corey, um, I don't think I'm so worried about my safety anymore. So, brother, I may be talking to you about that, okay? That is awesome, my friend. You're always welcome to walk where Jesus walked. And to Greg and the family leader and everybody listening, I look forward to meeting thousands of people. Come over to the the event. Let's Let's bring America back to its glory. And that starts with you surrendering uh, your life to to the Creator. Yeah, and I will tell you that as much as I'd love to give you a big bear hug next Saturday, 
my my hometown is throwing a, t- uh, a class reunion for anybody who graduated from high school in the 70s, and they've asked me to be the the whatever Kino. MC. Well, no, it's not really a speech. It's a it's the guest, the host, and I can't host. Yeah, I just can't. I mean, so I said yes, and uh, I'm gonna go because I kept my word. So, um, and I love Del Tackett. Just makes me so mad. I love Del Tackett, and I, and I love uh, T C Stallings, and now I'm in love with uh, Pastor Corey, but I won't be there. So maybe we'll get a chance to meet uh, that next day on Sunday or some other time. Would love to. If not, and then in Jerusalem. To, to you and to all the listeners. Yeah. All right, Pastor Corey. God bless you and your ministry and your family. And just know that he's amazingly in love with you. Your creator Thank you. created you for a purpose, and you recognized it. You surrendered to it, and you're making a difference in his creation every single day. And for that, he loves you tremendously. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. God All right. bless to everyone. You bet. Bye bye. Wow. Wow. I want to go there now. I've never wanted to go there until just now. Because, and you know why? Because I don't want to land and get on a tour bus. Yeah. And then have a tour guide take me and tell me what I want to know. I, I, I want to be with this man. I mean, I'll, I'll stay in a hotel. I don't need that. Yeah. But I want to hang with this guy. He's on the ground doing the real work. Can you imagine how that would, how that would, change you yeah. to walk in Jerusalem with a, a man who has a Christian church? Wow. You can, wow. See, like, you can see it just like Jesus saw it. Yeah, a- absolutely. Weep for the people. He's kind yeah. of love the people. He's kind of up there with that gentleman that Tom Coates brought in that was the uh, Korean missionary over in China yeah. Yeah. that his mother was willing to sell her eyes to get yes. him to America. His mother sold her eyes wow. so he could go to America and learn the gospel. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Robert, thank you for being here this week. It's been a great week. Frank, as always, I appreciate you. I know I make fun of you, but it's only because I love you. Uh, If if I didn't love you, you you, uh, wouldn't be here. That's right. Oh, that sounded horrible. Well, no, that means I love him. That means I, you love uh, him. Jebediah, thanks for your hard work this week. Good job on that promo. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Thank heavens Chris Roloff is in here because I don't really have anything nice to say about him. So he's not here. I don't have to do it. And you, my friend, I love you. Thanks for being here. That chair is yours anytime you want. Anytime you, you feel that passion of the Holy Spirit and it begins to stir in you and you believe you've got a sermon or something inside of you, there's the seat. Well, thanks, brother. And one challenge for all of us this 4th of July. Let's use our religious freedom. Let's share the gospel that day with somebody. That's right. That's exactly right. Let's use our religion. Here's my challenge to you. I'm picking up on Greg's challenge. Uh, Monday, share the gospel with somebody at Come and Go. Share the gospel with somebody at High V or the movie theater or wherever you go. In, in, when you're in the street catching candy, lean over to one of those little kids and says, do you know that Jesus loves you? I say that to little kids all the time. And it's just amazing. And you're amazing for listening to this radio station. I love this job. I could not do it without you. And so I thank you. My name is J. Michael McCoy. This is 99.3 The Truth, powered by WebcastOneLive.com. And remember, this weekend, get rid of a resentment you've been carrying. Because you know what, buddy? As you forgive, that's how God's going to forgive you. That's the gospel. See you in church.